Ever wondered how physics plays a role in sports? The answer may surprise you. At first glance, sports and physics might seem like polar opposites. One is all about sweat and adrenaline, the other about equations and theories. But peel back the layers and you'll find that they're more intertwined than you might think. The laws of physics govern every move an athlete makes, from the simplest jog to the most complex gymnastic routine. By understanding these laws, athletes can fine-tune their movements, coaches can devise better strategies, and fans can appreciate the beauty of sports on a whole new level. From the trajectory of a soccer ball to the aerodynamics of cycling, from the fluid dynamics in swimming to the force in weightlifting, physics is the invisible force shaping every moment of the game. So, fasten your seatbelts and keep your minds open. Let's dive into the fascinating world of sports physics, starting with running. Running, a simple action, yet filled with complex physics. Have you ever wondered about the forces that play a crucial role in this seemingly effortless activity? Let's break it down. First, we have friction, the force that opposes the motion of one surface over another. In running, it's the interaction between the runner's shoes and the ground. Without it, we'd simply be slipping around. Then comes drag, the resistance you feel when moving through air. Athletes combat this by wearing streamlined clothing and adopting an efficient running posture. Gravity too has its part. It's what keeps us grounded, literally. But it's also a force runners must overcome with each stride they take. Now here's the interesting part. Elite runners master these forces, not just endure them. They harness friction for better grip, minimize drag for smoother movement, and use gravity to propel themselves forward. It's an art, a science, and a sport, all in one. Next, we'll plunge into the science behind swimming. Swimming is not just about speed, it's about understanding water dynamics. The principles of fluid dynamics come into play as the swimmer interacts with water. You see, water is about 800 times denser than air. As a result, swimmers must optimize their technique to reduce drag, the force that resists their motion through the water. Next we come to buoyancy, a force that helps swimmers float. It's all about displacement, the swimmer's body displaces water, creating an upward force that counteracts gravity. The swimmer's stroke is a fine balance of these forces. With each stroke, swimmers pull and push against the water, creating a reaction force that propels them forward. This is a direct application of Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. By understanding these principles and applying them, swimmers can increase their speed and efficiency in the water. From water to land, let's tumble into the physics of gymnastics. Gymnastics, a sport where gravity is both a friend and a foe. In the world of gymnastics, physics principles like torque, angular momentum, and center of mass come into play with every move a gymnast makes. When a gymnast spins on the pommel horse or performs a dazzling flip on the balance beam, they are essentially becoming a living demonstration of angular momentum. By tucking in their limbs, they decrease their moment of inertia, allowing them to spin faster. The center of mass also plays a crucial role. An understanding of their body's center of mass helps gymnasts maintain balance during gravity-defying moves. It's like an invisible, personal fulcrum they constantly maneuver around. Torque, the force that causes rotation, is another physics principle gymnasts manipulate. By pushing off with one arm more than the other during a vault, they generate torque, initiating a twist in mid-air. As you can see, gymnasts are not just athletes, they're physicists in motion. Now let's shift gears and pedal into the aerodynamics of cycling. In cycling, air isn't just for breathing, it's a force to reckon with. Now when we talk about cycling at high speeds, the concept of drag or wind resistance becomes crucial. It's that opposing force that air exerts as a cyclist moves through it, and it increases as the speed of the cyclist increases. Notably, around 70 to 90% of the energy a cyclist spends goes into overcoming this wind resistance. So how do cyclists combat this invisible adversary? By getting aerodynamic. Cyclists adopt a streamlined posture, tucking in their elbows and lowering their head. They also wear tight-fitting clothing to reduce air friction. Even the design of the bike, with sleek frames and teardrop-shaped helmets, is all about cutting through the air more efficiently. Mastering these aerodynamics can make the difference between standing on the podium or watching from the sidelines. From wheels to skis, let's slide into the science of skiing and snowboarding. Skiing and snowboarding where gravity meets friction in a thrilling dance. The exhilaration of gliding down a snowy slope comes from a delicate balance between opposing forces. Gravity pulls the skier or snowboarder downhill, while friction between the ski or board and the snow tries to slow them down. 
but there's more. Athletes must also master their own center of gravity to maintain balance, adjusting their body position to navigate turns and jumps. It's a game of using gravity to their advantage, leaning forward to accelerate and leaning back to brake. Then there's the role of friction. Skis and boards are designed to reduce friction, allowing for smoother and faster rides. But athletes can increase friction deliberately by digging their edges into the snow, which helps them control their speed and direction. So, you see skiing and snowboarding are not just about skill and bravery, but also about physics. Next, we're going to aim high and explore the physics of archery. Archery, a sport that has been mastering physics long before it was a science. When an archer releases an arrow, they're not just relying on skill and precision, they're also playing with the principles of projectile motion. The arrow's path, or trajectory, is a perfect example of this physics principle. It's not a straight line, but a curved path known as a parabola, determined by the initial speed and angle at which the arrow is released. Air resistance, too, plays its part. The arrow's streamlined design reduces this resistance, allowing it to maintain speed and direction. It's like a game of tug-of-war between the arrow's momentum and the air it's cutting through. And let's not forget gravity, the unseen hand pulling the arrow downwards. Archers aim above their target to counteract this downward pull. By understanding these principles, archers can adjust their technique to improve accuracy, making each shot a fascinating interplay of forces. From bows to balls let's bounce into the science of basketball. Basketball, where understanding the bounce can make all the difference. Now let's delve into the physics of bouncing balls, beginning with force. When a basketball hits the ground, it's the force of the impact that sends it rebounding back into the air. This force is directly proportional to the ball's speed and angle of impact. Next we have momentum, a factor considerably influenced by the ball's mass and velocity. It's this momentum that keeps the ball moving even after it is bounced. Then we have the principle of energy conservation. When a basketball bounces, its kinetic energy is transformed into potential energy at the peak of the bounce, only to revert back to kinetic energy as it descends. These principles are at the core of basketball affecting shooting, passing and dribbling. Whether it's a three-pointer shot, a swift pass or a fancy dribble, the science of bouncing is at play. Next up will serve you the physics of volleyball. Volleyball, a game where every serve, pass and spike is a lesson in physics. This sport is a compelling showcase of the principles of physics at play, specifically projectile motion, air resistance, and spin. Consider the serve. The player launches the ball into the air and it follows a parabolic trajectory, a prime example of projectile motion. The angle and speed of the serve dictate the ball's path and landing point, showing us how control over these variables can dictate the game's flow. Next, let's consider air resistance. The volleyball's large surface area and lightweight mean it experiences significant air resistance. This slows the ball down and can alter its course, adding a layer of unpredictability to the game. Lastly, we have spin. A well-executed topspin or backspin can dramatically change the ball's trajectory, making it dip or float unpredictably. This is a perfect demonstration of the Magnus effect, where spinning objects curve away from their principal flight path. From volleyball court to football field, let's kick into the aerodynamics of soccer. Soccer, where the curve of the ball can make or break the game. It's not magic, but physics at play. The phenomenon that causes a spinning ball to follow a curved path is known as the Magnus effect. When a player kicks the ball with a spin, the air pressure on one side of the ball becomes less than the other. This difference in pressure makes the ball curve in the direction of the lower pressure. Now let's talk about drag. Think of it as air resistance. A soccer ball moving through the air experiences a force opposing its motion, which is the drag. The roughness of a soccer ball with its unique pattern of hexagons and pentagons disturbs the airflow around it, reducing drag and allowing it to travel further. Soccer players use these principles of Magnus effect and drag to their advantage, curving and controlling the ball with precision. Next, we'll lift your understanding of physics with weightlifting. Weightlifting, where every lift is a testament to the laws of physics. This Olympic sport is a brilliant display of how humans can harness the principles of force, leverage and gravity. Force, the push or pull on an object, is at the core of weightlifting. Lifters generate force through their muscles propelling the weight upwards. Now, leverage comes into play. Leverage is all about placement and angle. By positioning themselves correctly and using the right angles, weightlifters can lift immense weights that seem to defy their own body mass. It's like using a seesaw to lift a heavier friend. You don't need to be heavier, you just need to be positioned right. 
Then there's gravity, the force that's trying to pull the weight back down. The weightlifter's challenge is to overcome this force, to defy gravity, and hold the weight aloft. As we wrap up, remember that the physics of sports is not just about winning, it's about understanding the world around us and appreciating the beauty of movement and strategy.